Welcome back to the After Hours Show. I've got David Bernstein from Alio. Alio. Thank you very much for joining me. Guys, if you didn't take part of the, the first conversation, go back and listen to that because we answered some really key questions about how AI can impact your recruiting process and make you much more efficient. We're not gonna be replacing recruiters by any stretch of the imagination, but we're definitely going to um, show you how you can become more efficient in your overall recruiting process. And we, we did answer some key questions about how AI can stop unconscious bias in your recruiting process um, the different generations and how they're accepting the uh, AI and various technologies, stuff like that. So go back and listen to the, the first one. We're going to ask some, a couple of uh, hard-hitting questions here before okay. we get into it. Um, do you see that um, – I know I asked you this before, but I, wa I want a serious answer this time, right? So we, we kind of brushed around a little bit. But there was some recent data that came out. I want to see if you agree or disagree with this. But do you see any difference in how the generations are responding to technology in the recruiting process? Uh, the adoption curve is 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 moving more and more towards the mid professional and senior senior roles. Like I can tell you, we see that in in our uh, in our customers. Uh, the 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 ability, either it's the ability for them to understand that they can now be applied you know, the, to that uh, hiring segment and or it's more the, um, the readiness uh, of that particular constituency um, to be able to use these kind of technologies, um, you know, uh, degreed high level professionals, right? It's not just a high volume hiring widget anymore, yeah. right? Um, you know, hiring nurses and, uh, and doctors, for example, so, you know, through conversations with Alio, for example, right? Uh, and I think it follows a similar pattern, Jeff. If you imagine, if someone said to you five years ago, um, it, you know, executives will be sitting at home, they won't go to the bank, they're going to sit at home, and they're going to deposit their checks on their own through, through a phone on their app, through an app on their phone, right? Right. You would have kind of said, no way, right? Uh, right. Right. But I think it's a similar thing, right? There is, there is just as many or more tellers as, as I understand the data in the world today. They just now, they have less, they have different responsibilities, right? That things evolve. And, and I think that's going to be a similar world where, where recruiters are going to now be able to be taken out of the more mundane transactional and are going to be able to now have that ability, right? Um, as there becomes more and more adoption of this. So, um, so I mean, maybe... I, I I'm going to agree to, I'm kind of disagreeing with you a little bit. I think that there are two different gaps or two chasms that are developing right now. First one is generational. I think that this generation is um, far less accepting of a poor candidate experience than my generation. I'm Gen X, right? So born in 68. Um, if I have to sit through a half hour, 45 minute online um, you know, application process, I'm probably going to do it because my generation was the one that kind of had to go through that. We had no other option. And heck, I used to fax my resume in or, you know, even mail my resume to a potential employer. And the fact that I have to spend a half hour, 45 minutes, okay, I don't like it, but I'll go through it, right? I don't think that the Gen Zers are going to be as um, patient with a poor application process or, you know, a poor candidate experience going forward. Yeah, no doubt. I think, though, that it okay. follows the same logic that I was saying, though, is that, you know, people become acclimated to certain experiences, right? Right. Um, that what would they see in the daily world? And so why would they expect their their working engagements to be any different, right? When right. something super simple, right? That simple button is so pervasive, <laughs> right? Um, and that's why is it simple button so difficult to push them sometimes? <laughs> right. But if that's all you've ever grown up with, right? My kids yeah. don't know about paper application forms, for example, right? Uh, yeah. And here they are today, right? That they, you know, they go online or they can have a quick conversation, right? They, um, you know, um, instant communication, concept. instant gratification, instant re uh, feedback, and, you know, responses. Uh, it's My the TikTok was, generation is what I'm calling them now, right? So. No, that's the new app. It's the TikTok, right? <laughs> My daughter said to me yesterday that she just learned a new song on the guitar. And I go, oh, wow, how'd you do that? She goes, oh, I went on YouTube, right? Yeah. Right? So she has a, you know, a teaching pool, a talent pool of teachers out there that uh, and she found one that she really likes through their channel and 
um, now contributes to, you know, his, you know, by uh, throwing a couple dollars his way uh, for helping, right? He helps her. She's learning, right? It's, it's, a, it's a very different world. That's all she's ever grown up with, right? Right. So, yeah, for those people, sure, they're, they're not going to put up with, uh, right, a, a, a 45-minute kind of apply form, right? So here's the second gap or chasm that I was referring to is I, I think there's a growing distance between um, – blue collar and white collar professionals as far as their application processes. If you take things like um, CDL drivers or warehouse workers, things like that, um, I think there is a perception that they may not have full access to the internet, which I think is a false perception. Um, and I think that the, the hiring processes are being you know, changed in such a way to accommodate them but in a false narrative, right? I think that they are um, changing things in a way that is not going to be beneficial for um, blue collars. That's just what in my perception is. Are you noticing a difference between um, technology acceptance or implementations for companies that are perceived as being high tech as the ones that are being low tech or more manufacturing based, things like that, warehouse workers? Well, we're definitely... Um we're watching to see the interactions um, with Alio, for example, and uh, you know, first of all, heavy use through the mobile, but is that coming yeah. in through the mobile widget or is that coming in through SMS, right? And so we run the analysis and we, we talk with our, our customers all the time to help them understand what are their candidates doing and, what, and what, what do they need to be mindful of, right? Are, are they coming in through you know, the desktop or are they coming in through mobile? And if so, what are their preferences? Right. We're giving them those kind of insights that they, they haven't been able to see before. Right. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I mean, just like the unconscious bias around gender inequality and, and things of that nature, um, DNI, et cetera, I, I think there is going to be some, you know, bias in applying technologies or um, at least a proclivity to applying a certain type of technology like Alio to more high tech type positions as opposed to more of the lower tech positions. Um, hmm. And I, I don't necessarily like that. So. Yeah. Well, honestly though, the, the greatest percentage of our customers are, are doing, you know, we'll say lower skilled, high volume. Hiring. Okay. Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. yeah. No, it, truthfully. I mean, um, and again, they, well, we talked about it on the first part of the show, but um, they have substantive amount of uh, activity to automate. Right. And I think that's right. part of the reason why we saw, big brand names that are usually laggards in adopting new technologies leap onto this because they could quickly see, I don't need 50 people doing X, Y, Z anymore. Right. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Because really, so is that the real payoff then is, um, or the ROI that you can expect from some kind of automation is you don't need as many employees or what, what's the real payoff here? How do you calculate this ROI? Well, I mean, there, you, yeah, <laughs> all the factors yeah. come into that, right? <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's a, I think it's a portfolio of things, right? I mean, certainly there are going to be hard dollar savings. There's going to be, um, you know, we, we, we also see is optimized uh, throughput, right? You, you, you get a higher percentage of people completing an application form, even if all you're doing is just having Alley at the front end driving people into the apply form. It's fascinating. Well, for most of these websites, they're getting a 3% application rate once a candidate hits a job that they're qualified for. 3%, that's it. Right. Um, so I, in our case, what there's we're lots seeing, of room for improvement there. Oh, right? yeah. But what we're seeing is that 90% of the people who start a conversation with Alio actually go complete the, complete the conversation. That's so, amazing. I mean, yeah, it's fascinating to see. Because so once they hit that web page, Alio takes over that initial conversation and drives them to the apply sequence. No, yeah, it's amazing, right? Like I said, we have customers who've not changed. They still have their very lengthy, I won't say the name of the ATS, but their very lengthy ATS apply form. Uh, I'll name the ATS. It's uh, every ATS. Uh, there There's one that I know of that does not have a lengthy application right. process. They're all horrible. <laughs> I so, used to work for one of them. So. <laughs> okay, so you get it then. So Yeah, and all they've done then is they put Alu on the front end to help drive candidates to find the right opportunity and to be able to do that in, in less than 30 seconds um, has driven more candidate uh, completions on the application process. Well, here's what I see that most career website sites are, they act more like a brick wall, right? 
Um, you drive them to this website. It's got 25 different links you can click here to get our job alerts and click here to apply or click here to search or, you know, find out more about our watch these videos on employer branding. You go to a candidate who's kind of a deer in headlights. They just want to find a job that they're qualified for that they'd have an interest in applying to. And they can't even do that. They don't even know where to go. And this is where if you actually create a candidate funnel, it'll make a much bigger difference in the candidate experience because you're answering the questions that the candidate specifically has at the time that they have them, right? They don't typically have employer branding type questions or a day in the life of until they see a job wreck, right? So you need to give it information to them sequentially and that makes sense for a candidate experience or, or a path, if you will. Very logical. You're right. Right. About putting them with branding messages when they've not yet kind of decided if they really want to see themselves there. Right. Right. Um, so now it's okay to use an employer branding message to use it as an attraction tool. Absolutely. Yeah. But know what the funnel is after you drop them onto that page. They need some kind of interaction. They're not just going to do it themselves, especially those employer branding type messages. They're typically top of mind. It's a, uh, you know, opportunistic, if you will, hunting. And the, the candidate doesn't know what they're, what they don't know and what they're looking for. So you have to give them that experience. So imagine you can now do this as well through text or through yeah. voice, right? Um, and that ability, or video. I love yeah, video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, the, and be able to say, I'd like to work in New York city. And now you get to see all the opportunities, for example, in New York city, and you'll be able to express that uh, as, as naturally as I just did. And up comes the list, right? Um, and then that's presented to you and you can quickly get through that cycle of, you know, winnowing down, um, going through that conversation to get screened, take people through that. If they don't, for some reason, have the qualifications for that particular opportunity, then can we reroute them and show them something that they might be a better match for, right? Either now or in the future, um, right? And, and how do we kind of pull people into talent pools? How do we use Alia to kind of... Um, amplify the employer brand at the right time, as you were saying, right? Maybe, right? It's not just a, you know, bombarded moment, but kind of a very thoughtful process. A lot of opportunity to be able to, again, it, it all, I think it all goes back to, if you imagine Alio as your digital worker, right? And if you were to hire people, what would you do? And think of Alio as kind of now just a digital representation of that, right? What's the right place you want to deploy those people? What do you want them to say? What do you want them to kind of do next? Right. All, all of that, again, now you have someone who could do that though 24 hours a day. Awesome. Any other last, last words here? Oh, you know, um, try it out, right? Whether, you know, th this whole thing is really, uh, one of the things that I'm fond of, of kind of reminding people is that, you know, um, I actually, I come from PeopleSoft. That was my first HR job in life, right? <laughs> and it was, I had a great kind of moment to see the advantage uh, early adopter customers got by buying into using a large ERP system. Um, what I watched though is that, you know, the playbooks were written, the SIs would come in, they'd help you implement. If you were, you know, maybe you were a three-year laggard, you could come in though, but you could quickly catch up, right? That you, your, your competitive advantage of that was pretty short-lived. What, what we're seeing now though, that I think is distinctly different is you certainly, there's first mover advantage for using the technology. But the other thing is, as we've been kind of talking about this, this is so um, dramatic in how it can transform your business processes. And that's going to be iterative and um, idiosyncratic for every employer, right? No two customers will go through, the, they'll, they'll be somewhat of a playbook a, a consulting firm can help uh, create. But at the end of the day, every employer is going to have their own experience of what they want to do what it means really times to do transformation, right? And right. really kind of start over. This whole digital transformation thing is another three-year journey on top of just bringing the technology in. You're, if you don't start this, you're six years plus behind, right? And I just <laughs> did my, your, your, my um, the, the podcast that gets released this week, um, yeah. the week of uh, Halloween, uh, right. goes over, you know, why you should be implementing automation into your recruiting platform, um, or recruiting processes. And I specifically talk about um, that things are accelerating. If you're not testing, trying it out and getting it done right now, right. you're going to be absolutely completely lost in another year or two because the, the pace at which this 
technology is getting implemented, being developed and getting deployed and implemented into large organizations, especially and recruiting firms that are looking for massive efficiencies. Um, these smaller organizations are not going to be able to compete very quickly. Uh, spot on. I, I was talking with uh, a staffing company uh, the other day and he said to me, you know, our challenge is we are so rooted in our old way. And, yeah. uh, you know, but we got to make some smart investments. Otherwise we're yep. afraid we'll be relevant in five years. Right. And, you know, they don't have to be afraid. They will be irrelevant okay. in five years. Absolutely. It is, so. It's a guarantee. It's not an if it is a if in five years, you'll be irrelevant. So you and I are speaking the same language. So yeah. like I said, you asked me, what's my closing thoughts? And like, start, and <laughs> try it out. Yeah, you know, little steps of the way, you start to kind of put your toe in the water around this. Yeah, don't be and afraid. You mentioned it. earlier that Alio offers modules. You don't have to buy the whole piece of the pie. You get yeah. a little sliver, you get that implemented. And that's the that's one thing I, I made recommendations when I was in RPO. So look, you know, I could completely revamped your recruiting process and automate all kinds of it, put all kinds of funnels in place. But if your recruiters aren't going to start using it and utilizing it and the adoption of it, um, too much change too quickly for organizations is painful, right? But we are going to start with this piece and we will develop a roadmap so that in three months we can do the next one. In three months we can do the next piece right. um, so that you can eat a whole pie in a year and it doesn't take you five years. Right. And that's a roadmap people, just like a product development team. Absolutely. Right. The recruiting exactly. process should have a, you know, evolutionary roadmap, if you will. Absolutely. Just so my two well, cents uh, together in the marketplace, but yeah, cheering everybody on to take, to take those, uh, you know, uh, first steps and try things out, but yeah, definitely. Um, and love to be part of uh, supporting our, uh, you know, prospects in that category. So appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk with uh, your audience today, Jeff. Thanks. Awesome. Everybody, if you do want a demo, you can go to alio.com. You can schedule the demo right on their website. I'll also put some links in the description. David Bernstein, thank you very much. Thanks for your time, Jeff. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Make it a great one. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.